Benvenuti. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us for another incredible space flight. Today's flight is a special one. Not only is it Virgin Galactic's first commercial flight, our start of commercial service will carry a team of mission specialists and payloads from the Italian Air Force to space from Spaceport America, the home of Virgin Galactic in beautiful Sierra County, New Mexico. We are excited to take you on this journey with us and provide you with coverage of today's space flight. Hello everyone and ciao to all of our viewers in Italy today. I'm Siri Shabandla and I will be your host for today's flight along with our Mission Insights Specialist, Jonathan Ritchie. What an exciting day. It's a pleasure to be here in the studio with you. I'm excited for today's flight and I'm looking forward to sharing this journey with all of our viewers across the globe. Now, today's flight is in collaboration with the Italian Air Force and the National Research Council. The mission is called Virtute One, both an acronym for Volo Italiano per la Ricerca e la Tecnologia Suborbitale, or Italian Flight for Suborbital Research and Technology, and the Latin word for virtue that is also in the Italian Air Force motto, Virtute Sederum Tunis, with virtue to the stars. Now, today's flight is already well underway. Our crew on board our spaceship Unity took off, made it to our mothership Eve at around 8.30 a.m. Most flights you see start with a vertical takeoff from the ground. This requires a huge amount of energy to lift the vehicle from a static start up through the thickest parts of the Earth's atmosphere. Our air launch system allows the spaceship attached to the mothership to take off from a runway like that of a commercial aircraft. This takeoff allows the passengers to have a much smoother and more comfortable ascent as they make their way up to around 45,000 feet. And at that altitude, the Earth's atmosphere is much thinner, requiring less energy to launch. In the chase plane, we've got Dan Alix, who has completed over 2,600 hours of flying, logging most of his time in F-16s and F-35s. In Mothership Eve today, we have Jamil Janjua, who's completed 4, 000, over 4,000 flying hours in more than 48 different vehicles throughout his career that spans over 20 years in the Royal Canadian Air Force. Jamil is joined by Kelly Latimer, who has logged more than 6,700 hours in her 32-year flying career. At Virgin Galactic, we believe in the power of curiosity. Humans are an adventurous species. It's very natural for us to want to go and explore space. But we have an opportunity to be at the very birth of routine access to space. It's gonna be transformative. This first commercial flight is a research mission conducted by the Italian Air Force, featuring human researchers and payload experiments. We're able to further the technologies and the research that end up helping to better human life here on Earth. Commercial spaceflight is changing what access to space means. Release, release, release. Fire, fire. This is really the beginning of the next space age. All of us have a part to play, and that's going to be the thing that blows the gate open to the next generation. So maybe Jerry could give us a quick. 10. Five, three, two, one, release, release, release. Ignition. Good control. Trimming, that's turning, pulling the nose up. and trim is set. We're now traveling at approximately Mach 1.4. There's max Q, that's the maximum dynamic pressure on the vehicle. Those on board are experiencing about three Gs at the moment. The trim is complete and Unity is in the vertical headed toward space. Mach 2. Mach 2.8, rocket motor cutoff. Amazing. 
All right. Predicted apogee today is 275,000 feet. That's 84.3 kilometers. Incredible. Our mission specialists have been cleared to unstrap and enjoy the zero-g experience. This is amazing. This, what you're seeing is uh, Colonel Villa Day going to the back to tend to the payloads that are mounted on the rack. You can see Landolfi and Leo starting their experiments in their seat and having, it looks like, a great time, <laughs> of course. Yep. The feather is moving, as you can see. Starting that backflip maneuver I spoke of, the feather is now fully up. Amazing. And viva la Italia! This is 100 years for the Italian Air Force, so happy centennial to the Air Force. This is absolutely incredible. And welcome to space astronauts. How absolutely incredible. Ben, ben, benvenito nello espacio. Congratulations to Walter, Angelo, and Leo on becoming astronauts today. And a special congratulations to our pilot, Nicola, for his first space flight. Welcome back to space, Mike and Colin. This is absolutely incredible. Wonderful. You can see I'm tripping over my words because I can see <laughs> all the excitement here. And we've also trained our astronauts as part of our training program to, at Apogee, go to the window and take a look outside. So you're seeing them take a look and really t reflect and take in the view because all of the science and all of the research that they're conducting on board is for that vehicle, for that, that planet that they're looking out on. Mm -hmm. It's really that science and research is being vested back into this planet. And it's important for them to reflect and see where their hard work is going. Right. We have uh, achieved apogee at 85.1 kilometers or 279,000 feet. Incredible. The pilots are currently doing the, completing the backfill maneuver uh, orienting the vehicle for re-entry. Now, just before 0.1 Gs, the pilots will give that return to, uh, uh, return to seats call to the mission specialists. And our training team has worked this portion of the flight out so that it's very natural and intuitive for our passengers. Incredible. And just back to 1G as we begin re-entry. And those views are just absolutely amazing. Yes. be landing today on runway 34. We like to make left-hand turns for our approach. That's because the commander is in the left seat and that provides the best line of sight for them as they come in to the landing. Now the runway here at Spaceport America is 12,000 feet long. That's 3.7 kilometers and 200 feet wide or 61 meters, 1,000 feet above the runway. 500 feet. Over the threshold, that's the beginning of the runway. And you'll see the pilots hold the nose up. That's a uh, flare maneuver, all part of the energy management. Main gear touchdown. So the pilots will continue to hold the nose gear in the air as we continue to bleed off some energy as we run down the runway. And at the designated airspeed, they will lower the nose gear as well. Nose gears down. Now, as our ground speed slows, when we reach a designated ground speed, the pilots will apply the brakes and bring the vehicle to a complete stop. All right, braking now. And there's we'll stop. beautiful landing and a perfect way to complete our first commercial flight and our first dedicated science mission. 
congratulations to everyone on board, our very own spaceship Unity, who returned to space today. We saw beautiful flying from our EVE crew, Jamil and Kelly, and brilliant work by our chase pilot, Dan Alex, all of whom are still in the air right now. Great job to you all.